Good evening. This is CTV News for Wednesday, June 24th. I'm Patricia Ballone. And I'm Denise Douglas. Thank you so much for joining us. It is day two of the NTSB hearings regarding a deadly smoke incident earlier this year, and it is underway. Today's focus was on safety issues. The hearings are looking into the cause of the January 12th smoke incident that claimed one life and injured dozens of others. A WMATA official was asked about the agency's close call reporting program, which allows employees to report situations that have the potential for serious consequences. So they did receive initial training on that. We continually provide information back to them in regards to um, how they can do it. Uh, it's on the website, um, how, how to go about the close call reporting. It's a re actually a relatively simple program for them to initiate that. The NTSB is expected to release its findings and recommendations early next year. In a grassroots effort, residents and elected officials gathered this morning in front of the Laurel train station in hopes of keeping it from closing down. CTV Sonia Srivastava picks the story up from here. Well, more than 800 commuters use this Laurel station every single day, and officials say that not having it here will have a huge economic impact on the city. In 1884, the Laurel train station has been around for more than 130 years. Hundreds of people start using the station located here on Main Street at 5.30 in the morning. Save our stop! Save our stop! These residents are protesting a proposal that will move the train stop to a location in Howard County at the request of Laurel Park's owners. Deborah Randall owns a theater company on Main Street and says this will have a huge impact on the community. We have writers that come in really from all over the world but also mostly from all over the country and a lot of times they take this train, they stay at the Quality Inn and they walk to the theater. We fought hard with the senators to get Saturday and Sunday service to Baltimore and Washington because our citizens demanded it. They wanted the transportation. They didn't want to drive in to the different cities. It's stupid because the point of smart growth is to reinvest in areas where we already have investment in infrastructure, not build in Greenfield. There are so many riders, over 800 riders that ride every day. Myself personally, I rode the Mark train station for nine years when I worked down for the federal government. Um, this is just a community neighborhood. It's historic. It needs to be here. Now, Mr. Rick says that one of the reasons that they held this press conference here today was to bring awareness to the commuters and the city residents here. And their hope is that they will be brought to the discussion table with Howard County and with the Maryland Department of Transportation. In Laurel, I'm Sonia Shivasva. Back to you. And residents who ride the train are being asked to contact elected officials at the State Transportation Department. Patty, dozens of people have been displaced after lightning struck apartments in a complex in Greenbelt during last night's storm. The hit sparked a fire on the roof of one of the buildings at University Square Apartments. You can see the damage. And officials say 22 units were affected. Today, crews were on hand beginning cleanup and beginning the repairs. One of the residents told us about the scary moments before the lightning struck. Neighbor came out uh, about 15 minutes later, knocked on my door, get out, get out. You know, the roof's on fire and you look out and it was just a couple of smoldering embers initially, but within seven or eight minutes, it looked like a funeral pyre. It was maybe flames, maybe 14, 15 feet high. Um, and so it was about two to three strides from my apartment. The fire apartment got there maybe 10 minutes later and um, they were really good. I mean, they got it out within 15, 20 minutes, but for, for a while there was touch and go. Mike Gill also told us that the damage to his unit was minimal, but some of his neighbors had more extensive losses. Meanwhile, over in Montgomery County, 79-year-old Elmer Frolich died after his pickup truck hit a tree on Darnstown Road that had fallen during that storm. Nearly 70 Prince George's residents have been without H2O since this morning after a water main break in Upper Marlboro. Fire, EMS, and WSSC crews were called to the 4400 block of Bishop Mill Drive about 8 a.m. for reports of flooding. Water in the area was shut off, so repairs could be made to the 10-inch main. The street between Patuxent Elementary School and Daria Road is closed temporarily after erosion from the leaking pipe caused sections of asphalt to sink. Well, what I did when I saw the water and inside it was very weak, I started 
storing water. So I have some stored. Our units came down, took a look at the, um, the situation. The water damage to the road is completely severe. We have buckling of the roads and uh, lifting of uh, asphalt and uh, partial lifting of uh, driveways and concrete areas. And WSSC says service should be restored by this evening. Once repairs to the pipe are complete, crews will begin to work on the damaged roadway. Well, the Montgomery County Council has approved a bill that would require employers to give paid sick leave to workers. The vote on Tuesday was unanimous. The measure requires employers to provide a minimum of one hour paid time off every 30 hours for every 30 hours. Business representatives contended that the legislation would pose an unfair burden on small companies. As a result, the council approved a compromise amendment that allows businesses with fewer than five employees to provide 30 32 hours of paid sick leave and 24 hours of unpaid leave. Nearly 40% of the nation's private sector workers have no paid sick leave. You are watching CTV News, and I'm Denise Douglas. And I'm Patricia Valen.